In this video, we will explain forces in special relativity. In classical mechanics, a force is defined as the time derivative of the momentum vector. In special relativity, we use a similar equation, but instead of the time derivative, we use a derivative with respect to proper time tau. Since proper time does not change after a Lorentz transformation, k mu will transform in the same way as p mu does, which makes k mu a four vector. If you use the time derivative instead, k mu would not be a four vector. Assuming a constant mass, you can also write this as mass times the derivative of four velocity, which yields mass times four acceleration b mu. First of all, let us calculate the components of the four force k mu. To do this, remember that four momentum is given by mass times u mu, which is mass times gamma times cv. The zero component k0 is given by the derivative of p0 with respect to the proper time tau. This can be written as gamma times a regular time derivative of m gamma c. For a constant time independent mass, you can write this as gamma to the power of 4 times mass times the inner product of v and a over c. This k0 is connected to power, but this will be discussed in a separate video. For the spatial components of k mu, we also write the derivative with respect to tau as gamma times the derivative with respect to time. We now have two options to write this. On one hand, the time derivative of three momentum is exactly the classical three fours. So we can write this as gamma times f. On the other hand, we can use the product rule between gamma and v in order to calculate an explicit expression. Before we continue, compare the results of k0 and k with the expressions of the four acceleration b0 and b. As you see, the four vector version of Newton's second law still holds for constant mass. Now, let's take a closer look at the spatial components of k. We can identify the three force f as this expression, which looks more complicated than a simple f equals ma. What's more, the force does not even point in the same direction as the acceleration a. However, this expression simplifies in certain cases. If the three velocity and the three acceleration of an object are parallel, then we can simplify the three force to gamma cubed times mass times acceleration, so the force is parallel to the acceleration. And if the three velocity and the three acceleration are perpendicular to each other, the first term vanishes and only gamma m a remains. Also in this case, the three force is parallel to the three acceleration. Before we end this video, take a look at the following expression. The inner product of three force f with three velocity v. By simplifying this expression and comparing it to the zero component of k mu, we see that k zero can also be written as gamma over c, f times v. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.